Well, this is one of the most odorous, stinky stories we've ever done here on the show. Recently, a fight broke out between two male passengers on a flight from Dubai to Amsterdam. One of the passengers was offended that the man sitting next to him was having serious digestive problems and refused to stop. This man felt offended on this flight that the digestive problems wouldn't halt and so he got into it with this passenger. It became a brawl which escalated to the point where the pilot had to make an emergency landing in Vienna as quote passengers were on a rampage. The police boarded the flight removed the two men, and then removed two women as well who were sisters who sat next to them. Those two sisters are now suing the airline for wrongfully throwing them off the flight. They said they had nothing to do with the digestive problem or the brawl that caused the emergency landing. They claim they did nothing wrong and were wrongly removed. They called being associated with the two men who fought over this, quote, humiliating might be asking yourself, how long is this flight? Well, a flight between Dubai and Amsterdam is pretty long, seven and a half hours. So there are two sides to this, okay? On the one hand, you go, should you be inciting a brawl on a flight of seven and a half hours, which causes such a commotion that there has to be an emergency landing? Or on the other hand, you could say it's seven and a half hours. You're having digestive problems. You're inciting the problem yourself. Mraz, who do you side with here? I side with the guy with digestive problems. Okay, that's a long flight. He can't help himself. Obviously, does. he's mortified more than anybody. He doesn't want to be in that position. I think you just need to relax. Uh, you know, just suck it up. Put some earplugs in your nose and just relax. No need to start a fight over it. There's no way you could survive seven and a half hours next to this guy. There's no way. Yes, she can. If it's that bad. Then politely ask a flight attendant if you can move your seat. And what happens if it's a full flight? Well, then you write a letter when you get off the flight asking for a refund. You're going to start a fight and cause a commotion. There's enough problems up in the airline. People are uneasy as it is. I think what, what the guy has to do that has the digestive problems, he has to spend the flight in the bathroom. And what happens when the buckle the seatbelt sign comes? He's got then to, he's just flying around back there. He's got to eat it because he's the guy with the problem. But he doesn't want to have the problem. It's not like he's purposely being, okay, you know, Sean but, Avery on the ice. But he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's the Sean Avery of I'm the Dubai to Amsterdam right, He's not trying to be an He's a provocateur. He's more embarrassed, and, and he has to live with smelling himself more Maybe than anybody next to him. he's not embarrassed, and maybe that's the problem. Everybody, I've been there. Everybody's embarrassed in that situation. You just got to look forward, put on your movie, put on your headphones, and pretend it's not happening. You do not start fights in the air over anything, let alone a personal problem like that. Okay, but don't you think he's got to take some responsibility? It's his body creating that thing. I'm sure. Sure, he probably said, excuse me, or wanted to acknowledge like it wasn't him, and at some point just said, I'm sorry. But th- there's obviously a person here with a hothead who can't handle the fact that, you know, he's not the one in that situation. Well, I think... No that, reason to start a fight. I think no that, reason. I'm not pro-fighting on a flight, but I, I think this guy is a vigil- vigilante of the air, and I'm okay with that. Because oh, some, was he Batman of yeah. uh, United Emirates? Yes, I think that at some point in time, somebody's got to say enough is enough. If this guy's having this much digestive issues on the flight, it's a seven and a half hour flight. Somebody needs to say, you got to go to the bathroom, man. You got to stop doing that. This is everybody around you is having to deal with this. I mean, this is like, you know, nerve gas being dropped on top of this flight. This is not cool. You got a heck of a way to put it. You got to put this guy in the bathroom and a stewardess, an airline attendant should do that themselves. Put it. Put the guy in the bathroom. I'm sorry. They sh- the guy. It's like sending somebody into detention. You don't do that. It's not his fault. He's technically not doing anything illegal or wrong. It's not illegal, but it's socially unconscionable. Yeah. But you know what? If you do that, you open up Pandora's box. Because now you're going to start putting the guy who didn't put on the odor before his flight in there. Like, okay, maybe. The guy with a- smelly feet, he gets thrown to the bathroom. Okay, maybe. And then what happens when people actually have to use the bathroom? you got to drag the guy with digestive problems out of there and say, now you're not punished. Well, now you're punished again. I would ra- I'd rather have. There's no right guy. way to do this. I would rather have this guy 
quarantined into the little bathroom instead of having for seven and a half hours him stinking up the entire flight. All right, here's an idea. How about all airlines reserve the last six seats on every plane and don't sell those tickets? And anytime a situation comes like this, it's like the penalty box, okay, in hockey. And you send everybody back there. This way, the bathroom stays open, <laughs> and you put all the stinky people together in one row. And you figure you're never going to get more. Just like no, like the six changes, the six visits to the mound, you're never going to get more than six stinky people on a flight. So they all just get thrown back there, and one by one, you pick them off.